Hey everybody, it's Zach, Tennis Pro Doc, helping you improve your game with science. And today I'm gonna help you find the best tennis shoe for your foot, regardless of game style, foot type, or what ailments you might be bringing to the tennis court. Let's get started. Now as a foot doctor and former tennis instructor, I get these questions all the time from my patients and friends alike. And no matter what type of strengths and weaknesses you bring to the court, there is a shoe that will complement your game. All right, so let's break it down, starting with number one, foot type. Now, of course, there are three main foot types, high arch, neutral, and flat, mixed with either wide, narrow, or medium. Now, any combination of these can present a challenge. However, by far the most important part is width, because with arch height, you can customize that with an orthotic. So if you're a wide arch foot, the easiest way to go is just to find a shoe that comes in a wide width version, like the Asics Gel Resolution 8, New Balance Fresh Foam Lab, 996, 696, etc. However, there are shoes that just come naturally wide, like the Adidas Soul Court Boost, the Adidas Soul Match Bounce, or if you have a wider foot, but still want a little more of a vacuum seal on you, there are shoes that expand really well like the Will Sampa Feel 2.0s or the Asics Solution Speed, where they'll still fit a medium to narrow foot but expand for a wider one. Now, obviously, if you're more of a narrow foot, you don't want a shoe that's gonna allow you to slide side to side like the Soul Court Boost or the Soul Match Bounce. You'll want something a little more on the narrow side like the Eclipsian 3s from Yonex or the Mitsuno Wave Exceed Tour 4s. Now, one question I get asked constantly is, should I go up or down in size of a shoe if it doesn't fit me? Now, typically I say you should never go more than a half size up or half size down because if you go a full size up and down you start to mess with the length to width ratio of the shoe and that can lead to balance issues there are some exceptions to some shoes but as a general rule I try to tell my patients find a shoe that fits you in its correct size and one thing for the high arch viewers of this channel, make sure when you're looking for a shoe, you find one with a really high heel counter and ankle collar, as your foot is gonna wanna slip out of the shoe more than somebody else's. So avoid shoes like the Asics Gel Resolution 8, or maybe like the Fila Axilis 2, or something like the Mizuno Wave Exceed Tour 4s. And remember, there's only one way to truly find out what size shoe you should be wearing, and that's by measuring your foot with a Baranic device. And that's because most younger people are wearing shoes that are too big for them because they think their foot is a certain size, but it might be a size smaller, just wider. So you think you're an 11 and a half, but you might be a 10 and a half, double E, or even triple E. And because a lot of older players are wearing shoes that are too small for them, because as we age, our feet flatten out, and when they flatten out, they also lengthen. So you're used to wearing a shoe in a certain size. So you might think you're an 11, but once you actually measure it, you actually might now be a 12 or an 11 and a half. All right, number two, game style. Remember, not every shoe is good for every style of game. Because if you're a serve and volleyer, basically you're looking for aerodynamics and bounce, something to help you get to the net fast, maybe something to help you get up for overheads, something like the GP Turbos, the Solution Speeds, the Nike Air Zoom Vapor 10 or Next, maybe the Nike Air Zoom Prestige. You don't necessarily need that really big side-to-side -side stability that some of the bulkier shoes will give you. What if you're a big serve plus one player? It's all about serve and stability to set up for that next big shot. For those types of shoes, you need something with bounce and stability, something like the Nike GP Turbos, A6 Sport FF2, Babolat Jet Mach 2, or maybe even something like the Nike Vapor Cage 4s. Now, what if you're a baseline grinder or retriever, you make your money on speed, then you need a shoe that is stable and speedy, especially light in the uppers. Something like the Adidas Ubersonic 4s, the Nike Vapor 10s, the Nike Vapor Next, maybe the Wilson Amplifiels, Adidas Ubersonic 2s, or even something like the Onyx Eclipsian 3s. Now, what if you play on multiple surfaces? It'd be nice to have a shoe you don't have to change every time you change surfaces. So something like the Asics Court FF2, the Adidas Soul Match Bounce or Soul Court Boost, Yonex Eclipsian 3, or Nike Vapor 10 or Nike Vapor Next. Any one of those shoes either has a deep herringbone or a wave pattern that'll grip pretty much any court surface pretty well. There are a lot of people that confuse a flat herringbone for being good on clay. Flat herringbone is good for sliding on a hard court. It is not good for sliding on clay. It'll not dig in, you will lose your footing. But remember, if you're playing on clay, you want deep herringbone, wave, or that aggro crag material to dig in. And speaking of sliding, if you are gonna slide on a hard court, make sure you get a shoe with either a big air channel going through it, or those nice wide flat spots of herringbone. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Also, if you are a big slider, make sure that you get a shoe that has a lot of outsole material coming up over the toe box so you don't burn through the shoe after only a couple weeks of playing in them. All right, number three, injuries and chronic conditions. Now, if you're a tennis player that hasn't had a chronic foot injury or leg injury, either number one, you haven't been playing long enough or you're the exception that proves the rule. So if you have heel pain of any kind, make sure that you stay away from shoes with either a low heel counter or a thin or hard midsole. Something like the Nike Air Max Volley, the older Ubersonics like the 2s or 3s, the Mizuno Wave Exceed Tour 4s, the Asics Gel Resolution 8, just to name a few. 
and maybe steer more towards shoes with either a higher heel counter or a thicker, more maximal midsole, like the Nike GP Turbos, the Adidas Soul Court Boost, the Onyx Eclipse and 3s. And if you suffer from chronic ankle sprains, move more towards shoes with higher tops and wider lateral flanges, like the Nike Cortec Challenge 20, the Adidas Sycon BOA version, or something like the Adidas Soul Court Boost. And if you have painful flat feet, make sure you're not getting a shoe with a ton of flex on the inside of the shoe like the Nike Vapor 10. Get something a little more of a stout ankle and a little more stout arch support. Something like the Ubersonic 4s if you're into a lighter shoe, or the Adidas Soul Court Boost if you're into a more maximal shoe. Or even something like the Nike GP Turbos with all that midsole foam underneath of there. Now what about pain in the ball of your foot? You're going to want to avoid shoes that have a thin midsole like the Ubersonic line, even the 4s, the Vapor line, and go more towards something like the GP Turbos or the Soul Court boost something with a lot of midsole foam in the forefoot and what if you're coming to the courts on a bad knee or a hip or back or spine you're gonna need a shoe that has a lot of midsole foam a lot of support in the midsole so avoid those minimalist shoes like the ubersonic line the mitsunos or the vapor line and stick more towards sole court boost territory sole match bounce territory gp turbo eclipsy and threes things that have really thick tough midsoles even like vapor cage fours now also you may be wondering when to get rid of a pair of shoes typically it's 500 miles when the tread bottoms out or when they just start irritating you because because remember when the tread bottoms out typically that's when the midsole is bottoming out too now if you've made it this far into the video you might be wondering why are the same shoes in different categories well, that's because some people might have a wide flat foot or a narrow high arch foot or vice versa or you might have ball of foot pain in your flat foot or ball of foot pain in your high arch so make sure you look for what shoes are in each category and then match them up and that's probably the shoe for you and remember there's no such thing as a perfect tennis shoe remember these shoes are mass produced so unless you are on the tour you're probably not going to be getting that custom feel that you want out of a shoe and if you do make sure you send me one so i can check it out for the channel so no matter what kind of foot or game style you play there is a tennis shoe that'll complement it you just have to find it by experimenting and trial and error just like tennis see you next time